Yes. Well, uh, I like the um, parallel between um, motor vehicles. I'm addicted to my car mm -hmm. because I just can't get around without it. But a car is a dangerous animal. It kills people. It's a dangerous thing. But we've made them as safe as we can. We've made the roads safer. They're still dangerous. It's dangerous crossing the road, more dangerous than flying. Um, so it's not. I'm not against technology. I'm, a, I'm supportive of smart, safer public health protection technology. You know, for example, um, the mobile phones can be made over 99% safer, uh, and even 99.9% .9 safer. Mm -hmm. And I know that is available. There are patents for that kind of thing. I know the technology very well. And you can find the same, you can have your radio and your TV through a fiber optic cable. And so our telecommunications for our media have got a safer technology that's available, cable. But the fiber optic cable uses light, not fields, not radiation. So we're using the atmosphere as a cheap mechanism for transferring the signals. It's more expensive to use wires and fiber optic cables, but the technology is available and we should in our cities as much as possible, move our signals into cables so that we're not irradiating genotoxic signals into our community, drastically increasing our cancer rates, all the cancer rates. And I go further than that and say one of the problems actually is in the home. Electricity is a wonderful thing, all the appliances. But I find in homes the fields can be 20 times higher in some homes than others. That means the cancer rate can be 20 times higher in one homes than others because the wiring in houses is now in multiple studies associated with cancer. Mm -hmm. And so energy efficiency, passive solar, all those lovely things that we now know how to do, and we've only known passive solar for 3,000 years. The Greeks used to use it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's why I go back into the history and find what's the history of that knowledge. But if we can use the natural solar cycles, the natural thing of shady trees, that somebody comes and takes a leave off in winter so that you can get the sunshine into your house in the winter, the, the uh, windows are larger on the sunny side of the, the season, and uh, it's, uh, they're smaller on the, the I, I would say, the south side, you would say the north side <laughs> in your hemisphere. Um, but there are so many ways that we can use human intelligence to make our lives safer and more comfortable and cheaper because a lot of these things are actually far cheaper and don't use fossil fuels, don't cause global warming. And so the solutions actually solve so many environmental problems, the global climate problem and the human health problem, and a drastic reduction in our health um, pressure on our hospitals and our doctors, because we should be into prevention, not treatment. And there's a strong pressure not to do that because those who are producing the drugs and the chemicals are the same companies. <laughs> and uh, I'm, a, I'm afraid that most doctors don't know what I know. I'm an environmental scientist looking at environmental factors, and most doctors haven't got a clue what I'm talking about and what the research shows. Mm -hmm. It would be great if our medical people would become aware of this and encourage their, their patients to do much more healthy things and encourage their politicians to protect public health and so that we could then have warmer and healthier homes, safer transport, and a whole um, much lower cancer rate because the latest research that I've seen uh, from other researchers is that the wiring in houses causes a drastic increase in a particular indicator cancer for very young children. Two to five-year-old children have this acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And it only occurs in populations after the wiring in houses has occurred. It occurred state by state in the US. It occurred only in Africa in the urban areas until etc. It occurred in only Gaza Strip after the, the wiring went in. So this, when you track that cancer, every other cancer goes up in parallel with it. And it's risen by a factor of over 10 in the first half of last century and continued to go up since then. It implies that over a factor of 10 of the cancer is avoidable. Mm. Now that would make a drastic improvement in, our, in our, our homes and in our hospitals, wouldn't it? And in our costs and in the taxes. Mm. So I think this information is very important for the economy, more than just public health. Yeah. And I'm sure that there's a company that could figure out some way to make uh, money from some of these things, since that's so, so important to them. Um, I, I, we only have a little bit of time left, and I, I wondered uh, if you would say something, please, about um, climate change, Dr. Cherry. Well, the um, 
with the Governmental Panel on Climate Change, the biggest um, group of climatologists in the world, has come out with a very strong report saying human beings are changing the climate. We have cooled by 0.1 degrees Celsius in the last 1,000 years and warmed by 0.6 degrees Celsius in the last 150 years. It's very conclusive. And that's causing changes in human resonances. It's causing more floods, more hurricanes, more droughts, um, more out-of-season frosts. It's causing the movement of, of, of weather systems away from where there was reliable rain to less reliable rain, where there didn't used to be floods, but there are floods. So what people have done for hundreds and thousands of years is now having to change. So where you could grow grapes, you can't anymore, and things like that. So we have to take that seriously. And what I've mentioned about our homes and our energy efficiency and having much more efficient transport systems are the major sources of the global warming CO2, the fossil fuels, the coal, the oil, the natural gas. So if we go for an energy efficient, sustainable approach to our lives, then we would reduce, drastically reduce the cost, but also the global costs. And the insurance companies are taking the lead because they're paying the costs. And you'll find your insurance rates will go up, not just because of big oil tankers uh, like uh, the Exxon Valdez, mm -hmm. but because of hurricanes, because of more... Uh, damage along the Florida coast, etc. And we should not be uh, putting homes in floodplains and in hurricane areas. Mm -hmm. But too late, we've done it. We've got major cities in these areas. So we need to have mitigation measures, we have, have evacuation measures. We have, these things will happen for over 100 years after we stabilise CO2. Mm -hmm. The longer we take to do that, the longer these will go into the next generation, the generation after that. Well, there is so much evidence and uh, so much denial at the same time. Are people um, in New Zealand or in your travels around the world, do you find that people, uh, the, the general public, is at all taking what you have to say and your findings seriously, Dr. Neil Cherry? When I've explained it carefully to groups, then it's taken quite seriously. But the officials are a filter to our politicians. And if they filter out this evidence, then the politicians haven't got a clue and they don't make good democratic decisions. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a way of getting past the officials to the politicians. And I think the media and your program is a very important role for that because I can quote the papers, I can show the papers, I can show the analysis, and there are scientists around the world in all these areas in energy and energy efficiency and health effects and epidemiology that have published this material and they can support this information. But very few put it all together like I have because my experience was over so many background things that it all comes together to make sense to me. So it's my joy to explain it to people, my frustration that officials and politicians can't hear. Yeah, well, I can certainly uh, understand <laughs> your frustration. And um, I want to let people know how to get a hold of you if they have uh, questions and uh, want to discuss this further, get more information. You have certainly lots of uh, written material. And uh, Dr. Neil Cherry can be found by email, neil, N-E-I-L, dot cherry, C-H-E-R-R-Y, at E-C-A-N. And that uh, refers to your electric position, right, in the environmental... Canterbury. Environmental yeah. can uh, Canterbury. So E-C-A-N dot G O V T dot N Z. Again, that's Neil N E I L dot Cherry at E C A N dot G O V T dot N Z. And Dr. Neil Cherry is from New Zealand. That's what the N Z is about. So thank you very much, uh, very, very much, Neil Cherry. And my name is Sue Supriano. Thanks for listening and thanks for your work. Thank you very much, Sue, and thank you for your work too. It's a teamwork.